Hello. In this video, uh, which is to me in the future, I am going to uh, explain how I got an image, a bitmap image, on the screen of a Commodore 64, because in the future, I will have forgotten this information, and I'll need to figure it out or remember what the heck I did. So uh, here it is. So to get an image on the screen, uh, you first need to have the data in a format that a Commodore 64 can understand. So a bitmap uh, on a Commodore 64, and there are several, there's two types of bitmaps. I'm going to talk about the um, kind of the high res bitmap it is a 320 by 200 pixel image. And that's, that's what you see here. And it is not a line by line format like you'd have on an Apple II or probably some other system like a, you know, a TRS-80 color computer or something. The pixels uh, are grouped into eight by eight boxes. So the first entry in the data file is going to be uh, the first line of eight pixels followed by the second line of eight pixels followed by the third line of eight pixels until that eight by eight box of pixels has been written out into the, to the data file. Then following that will be the, the next eight by eight box of pixels. So the next eight pixels, next eight pixels, next eight pixels, next eight pixels until I've written out eight pixels and then I go across. So, so the data is not a line of a screen at a time. It is uh, a box of eight pixels at a time. Now with any, within any eight by eight box of pixels on the screen, there can be a foreground color and a background color. And so after your, uh, the data that in your file that contains all the boxes, you're going to have to have another set of data that contains the foreground color and the background color for that eight by eight pixel box. And because the Commodore supports uh, 16 colors, you're going to have four bits for the foreground color. Those are the four high bits uh, of a color attribute followed by the four bits for the background color. And uh, because there are um, uh, a thousand of these boxes on the screen that you're going to have a thousand of these color attributes and I'll, I'll get to where like where all that stuff goes um, in a minute so uh, what, what I've done is I've made a c-sharp program that takes this bitmap and it rewrites it uh, in the format that a Commodore 64 can understand followed by 1000 um, attri color attribute entries that has the um, where each attribute has the four bits for the uh, foreground color in the, in the upper four bits and the lower four bits are the the background color for for a particular box. And if you actually run this program and take a look at what it dumps out, what what I've got here is there's here's all my pixel data. These are the pixel data. It's like you know, every every bit is either on or off, and then following all of that, you're going to have 1,000 uh, attribute bytes. And so the first byte here is the attribute, the color attribute for the first box of eight by eight pixels on the screen, and the second box of eight by eight pixels on the screen. Now my uh, and my image is all black, so there's no there's no foreground color, there's no background color. They just both ended up being black. Um, so, um, and but you can see here there there's a different foreground color and background color, and that that's just the way my tool ended up writing stuff out. So you've got um, a whole bunch of pixel data followed by a whole bunch of color uh, attribute data, and what. Um, what that does is it allows these. This is the data on the screen, and this is the color information used to display that data. So let's take a look at you know, assuming we've got you know an image or some data that's been converted into a format that a Commodore 64 can actually display when it's in bitmap mode. Let's just pop over to the little loading program that I'm working on, and we'll take a look at what it takes to actually get the machine into loading mode or into a bitmap mode and um, kind of understand a little bit better how those, what, what chips are in the Commodore and how you have to configure them to display the information that you want to display. So the, the chip, the VIC-2 chip that drives the graphics for the Commodore uh, has a bunch of hardware locations or memory locations that you can write to to configure what it actually does. And most of the information that I got here was out of uh, two sources. 
Uh, one was the um, this website right here, atarimagazines.com, compute this back issue of compute from, uh, I don't think it was 1983 or 1985. There's a very good article in there about how, how to actually get bitmaps on the screen. A lot of it is in basic, so you have to kind of interpolate between basic and assembly. And here I'm working in assembly. And then um, I have the programmer's reference manual in front of me. And then there's also the C64 wiki. Uh, some of that information has been copied into this, this file as well. So um, I'm kind of fusing information from three sources together to kind of uh, get this whole thing working. So the VIC-2 can see 16K um, of memory at a time, and you have to configure it to tell it which bank of memory it needs to be looking at to um, get the data that it is going to display on the screen. And in this particular example, I am using bank two, uh, which starts at uh, 16K in memory. And that is because uh, if you want to be in bitmap, if you want to display a high-res bitmap, um, you have to be at a multiple of, um, of 8K. So, so this is the one that works out for me. So I'm going to tell the VIC-2 chip uh, that I want to be looking, or I want it to be looking at um, the bank that starts at 16K or hex 4000. And to do that, I have to, um, uh, I'm loading the number two into register A, and then I'm writing that out to this memory location, uh, DD00. And that tells the VIC-2 chip, okay, you are going to get your information from this uh, 16K block starting at uh, hex 4000. Okay, so that's that's the first piece of the puzzle. The next piece of the puzzle is, okay, so uh, one of these high-res bitmaps is 8K, but the VIC-2 is now looking at a bank of 16K, and you have to tell it which part of this bank contains the uh, screen memory and which part of it contains the bitmap data that you want displayed. And this was a real mind bender for me. Like, what is this screen memory? Like, why, what is, uh, I thought the bitmap that was the screen, but it, that, that's not the case actually. So um, you can put the your, your 8K bitmap in the upper 8K or lower 8K of that 16K bank. So um, in this address D018, which again is telling the VIC-2 chip what it's supposed to do, you have to t tell it, okay, where are you getting, um, what, what is the offset of the screen memory within that 16K block? And is the bitmap data in the upper or lower 8K of that block? So the upper four bits of, uh, of this register are the offset of the screen memory. And then uh, bit, bit three of that register toggles whether the bitmap data comes from uh, the lower 8K or the upper 8K. So what I'm doing here is you can see this is a zero. So I am saying that the screen memory starts zero bytes past the start of my block, which is at hex 4000. And because this is a, this is a one all the way at the left, um, I am toggling, I'm, I'm setting the toggle that says, okay, my bitmap, my 8K bitmap, is in the upper 8K of that 16K block. All right, so that's um, so that's one of the control registers set. Now you have to do some other stuff as well. You have to tell um, the VIC-2 chip uh, that it is in bitmap mode, and to do that, you have to turn on bit five, which means you know or it with uh, with 32, and that'll turn on bit five. And you have to clear bit six. I'm not really sure what bit, bit six is. I'm sure that that's turning off some sort of character mode. So clear bit six, set bit five in uh, hex D011 or uh, 53265 um, in decimal. And that will put the machine uh, in, in bitmap mode. And then you also have to say, okay, now that we're in bitmap mode, there's a two color bitmap mode and a four color bitmap mode. And that is apparently configured through D016 in, in a control register at that address. And you have to clear bit four. So if you want to clear bit four, you make a mask that has all ones except in um, the fourth bit. 
and and then and it with your with your data and that will clear that bit so what i'm doing is like get the existing value cl clear a bit for and then write it back uh that's what i'm doing there and now i have i have cleared bit four and apparently that that will toggle me that will set that this is a two color bitmap mode as opposed to a four color bitmap mode where the the boxes on the screen are are bigger so you've got a trade off between resolution and the number of colors so in this example, I'm just going into the standard bitmap mode with two colors per eight by eight box. And then the rest is just an assembly language loop to copy the data into the memory locations that I just established. So I'm setting up a counter variable that um, is gonna run 8,000 times. Why 8,000 times? Well, because the screen is 40 bytes wide in this bitmap mode, followed by, uh, 20 bytes tall, or sorry, two 200 lines tall. So, so 200 times 40, that's going to give you 8,000 bytes of data or 8K. And so I'm setting up my source pointer and my destination pointer. So my destination pointer, this, this image source, this is down here. This is all the data that I just pasted in from my program. Um, so this is this data is coming from the program, but where am I copying it to? Well, um, so this is configurable. This, this is what we set up in the VIC-2 chip. So our, remember our, our screen memory, or, or, or we're putting the, the, the bitmap into the upper 8K of that 16K block we, we set up. So let's go look at what, what, we, what, what we configured that to. So the uh, pixel memory is uh, 6,000. And like, so what does 6,000 mean? Well, we configured our the VIC-2 chip to say that it was gonna look at uh, 4,000 hex and then uh, 8K past that. 8K in decimal is 2,000 in hex. So add 2,000 in hex to 4,000 and you get 6,000. So that is the um, pixel memory 6,000. That is the upper 8K of that block that the VIC-2 is looking at. So what that first that first loop does here is that it copies 8,000 bytes from our program into the uh, upper 8K of that block that we told the, the VIC-2 to look at. Okay, so that just gets the pixel data on the screen, but then we need a second memory move to get the color attribute data into memory. And this totally tripped me up as well. I was thinking, okay, there's this whole thing in the manual about color memory surely that's where the attribute data goes and i had just come from working on a sinclair machine where you have your screen memory followed by your attribute data however that is not what is going on here in bitmap mode the color information does not go in the color memory the the color attributes goes in the screen memory and that took me about three days to find the right passage and, and have it catch my eye the right way so our screen memory, it, we configured to be zero bytes past the uh, 16K window or 16K bank that the VIC-2 is looking at. So the screen memory uh, is the destination for our, um, for our color attribute data. And there's 1,000 color attribute blocks. And uh, so this uh, loop here is gonna copy 1,000 color attribute blocks or, or bytes uh, from um, the attribute data in this file, which if I scroll down, you can see that is in the file too, all the way down here. There's my attribute data. So it's going to co copy the data from the, oops. So I'm going to copy the data from the, the, the color attributes into my screen memory. And then I'm setting my loop counter and I'm, I'm jumping to my mem move function. So what I've got here is a function called mem move. And I have to set up source pointer, destination pointer, and counter. And, and then it'll just, just copy the data. So that, that's what I've got here. I've got two mem move loops, right? So copy 8,000 bytes from our image data into the uh, upper 8K bank that the VIC-2 is looking at. And then followed by another loop that says, okay, copy a thousand bytes from our attribute data into the screen memory because color information goes in the screen memory, not in the color memory. And uh, at that point, it should be, uh, at that point, I've copied both the pixel data into memory 
and the color attribute data in screen memory. And I've got the VIC2 configured so that it is in 320 by 200 two color bitmap mode. So um, I can test this out now by uh, going into my program here, or my little directory, and let me run my build script build.sh. And that will copy the script in here, build it, build it, build it, build a disk image. And then let me pull up um, uh, Vice. All right, so here's Vice. And now let me uh, open that disk, uh, attach the disk to drive A. So there's my test disk. Okay, so now let me load. Um, oh God, what was it? Loader.png colon eight. And it's going to sit here and run forever. Oh, all right, there we go. Sorry, I typed it in wrong the first time. So loader.prg is the name of the program. And now I should be able to run this. And when it starts up, the VIC2 chip will uh, be configured to look at a particular 16K bank. It will be configured to look for the bitmap in the upper 8K of that bank. It'll be look configured to look for the color attributes in the screen memory, which are uh, offset zero from the start of that 16K bank. And then the VIC2 will be toggled into uh, bitmap mode uh, so that it actually displays that on the screen. And now if I run it, there it is. There's my picture um, on the screen. So that was everything it took. And that was like a three-day battle. And I'm not proud of that. But um, what are you going to do? You know, nobody nobody said this was easy. And I, I don't want to make it seem like, oh, yeah, I just pulled all this stuff out of my rear end and it magically works. And it was so easy, right? And why don't, why aren't you doing it? So there it is. That was the battle I had to fight to get this, um, this 320 by 200 bitmap on the screen. And um, if, if um, you need help getting this done, just email me, evancwright at yahoo.com. I'll send you my files, send you my tools, send you my source code, and, um, and hopefully you can get a bitmap on the screen as well. Now, the whole purpose of this was I'm just working on a text adventure system, which has nothing to do with graphics, but I thought it'd be really cool to have a loading screen. It was easy on the uh, Sinclair. It was easy on the Apple. Uh, Commodore 64, not so much, but that's because the Commodore 64 is a much more sophisticated machine graphically. Anyway, there you go. Hope you found that interesting, and I hope I find that useful in the future after I've forgotten everything I just said.